I am Marielle Hemingway. I'm an actress. I'm an author. I'm a lover of life. My grandfather couldn't write anymore, and that was his love, that was his passion, that was his creativity, that's what he lived for, that's who he was. Ernest Hemingway was a great writer and he was sitting in front of his typewriter <laughs> at the time and he was no longer able to create in the way that he knew, knew how, in the way that he'd lived his life. And he took his life because he couldn't do the one thing that he really, really loved. Coming from the amount of suicides that I have come from, I mean my grandfather committed suicide his father committed suicide. My grandmother's father committed suicide. My great uncle committed suicide. My uncle committed suicide. A cousin committed suicide. My sister committed suicide. So I definitely have a relationship to mental illness. <laughs> when I was growing up in Idaho, I definitely knew that there was some imbalance. I didn't know the degree of the dysfunction. I didn't know the degree of the addiction and, and, and mental imbalance that was going on. I mean, I didn't even realize for a lot of my childhood that my sister, my eldest sister who, who su suffers from schizophrenia, bipolar, you know, suicidal tendencies, I didn't even know that she was going, I was told she went off to different schools and she was going off to, you know, mental institutions. Um, my oldest sister was often, you know, really struggling and, and you know, went through the streets naked in, in the middle of my hometown and I never knew really why. Um, so, and I didn't know, I mean, I loved my sister. She was whimsical and wonderful and incredibly bright, but she was also, you know, she was mentally unstable since, since I was very, very young. I, I think I lived in the, the end of a generation that just didn't speak about these things at all. You know, my, my father, when my sister committed suicide was in such denial, he refused to believe that his daughter committed suicide. He's already been the son of a, of, of, a, of somebody who committed suicide. And it was the sister that we didn't think would commit suicide. And it wasn't until my father had died and I was hosting this dinner and I admitted that she committed suicide. You think that you were responsible in some way. It's such a tragedy and we're so deeply affected by it, but it's not our fault. Everybody plays a role in their family, and I played the, I'm gonna be the good girl and I'm gonna take care of things, so I was the cleanup girl. I cleaned up everything, and many times I cleaned up broken wine bottles and blood from, you know, the night before. You know, that sort of behavior of, of sort of taking care of the family and trying to make things look okay started probably when I was about nine. That went through till I left at 16. Being a caregiver for my mother uh, very early on was, again, it was my reality, it was my mother, and I was madly in love with my mother, and I didn't want her to die, and when she got cancer, I, um, I felt it was my responsibility to keep her alive. Um, for some reason, at, you know, when, at 11 years old, when she got the cancer, I decided that it was my job to do anything she needed because I wanted her to live. And um, so when I actually went off and made a movie, she relapsed and I thought it was my fault. Uh, that was 12 at the time. You know, caregiving as a child is such a, it's a horrible thing to, for a child to have to go through. I mean, I don't blame my parents or anything. I, it, was a, it was a role I chose, but it's just, it takes your childhood away, you know? When I had my own children, I was so adamant that I wasn't gonna get sick. I never wanted my kids to have to take care of me. I thought that was such a horrible thing because I, I wanted my kids to be kids, you know. I didn't realize until maybe two years ago that I was basically depressed my entire life. It was kind of like a, a, a low-grade fever. I was just depressed. I, you know, I just didn't feel happy. I was extreme in everything I did. I over-exercised. I ate too extreme, you know, I was macrobiotic, I was vegan, I was raw, I would, I'd ate fruit for one year and drank coffee. You know, I did too many things at the extreme. I think that eating is a big, I think it's a big mental issue, especially for women. I mean, our family used food as a replacement for love. If I could control my body and how it looked and felt and all that stuff, I felt that that was the way that I was gonna survive whatever genetic predisposition I had for 
mental illness. You know, I always thought that there was somebody outside myself who was going to give me the answers to my problems, you know, not realizing that I had all the answers. You know, I knew the solutions to my life, to my problems. I wake up more slowly now. I, I take time to think about what I'm grateful for. I, I, I take time to think about how my day is going to go. I breathe. What I now have realized through my lifestyle choices is that I truly feel that I've broken the chain of whatever that is. People have called it the family curse and all this thing. And I realize now that I no longer fear that. Now, for me, that is the best gift that I could give my daughters because it doesn't mean they're never gonna be depressed. It doesn't mean that they won't have a problem in their lives. They seem to deal with their problems well. And I truly believe that, yes, we have genetics, but I also believe that there's work to be done that people can heal themselves and break chains and patterns. A lot of years of meditation practice have really helped me. I breathe, you know, I shut the computer down, I get off the phone, I close my eyes, and I connect with myself. When I feel overwhelmed, I get out in nature. Just like stop what you're doing, take a deep breath, go outside, drink water, connect, slow down. And it really does work. It gets rid of anxiety. I would say that I'm probably living in my highest place right now. I feel so connected. Like it's not without fear. It's not without like anxiety, but it's very conscious of it. You know, so when I feel anxious, I feel it, feel it fully and then I'm done. So uh, this doc documentary was made by Barbara Koppel, who's a two-time Academy Award winning director. It's about me running from crazy my whole life and, and worrying that I was gonna either wake up crazy or wake up with cancer like my mother had. I want people in school, uh, kids in schools to see it, rehab centers. I want people to use it as a way to say, I can talk about this. Mm -hmm. That's all I care about. I want people to, to be able to, have the courage to tell their own story. This is my grandfather's house. He spent a lot of time there riding, and of course, that's where he took his life. This is where he killed himself. I was in my late 20s when I found out. I never knew. And somebody said, well, yes, and this is where it happened. And I was like, wow, I was so blown away. I just had no idea that this was it. As a community, the more we talk about it, the more we address it, the more we deal with it in our everyday lives, the more healing that we can offer everybody. But it is about reaching out. And that's the message I wanna give everybody. Keep talking about it. I've always been on a path to health and wellness. My life partner, Bobby Williams, and I wrote Running With Nature. What we like to say is we like to take the I out of mental illness put in we and you create mental wellness. And we means literally we. So we really feel as though there's a yin yang, a male female dynamic on how to be healthier and happier and more connected in nature, in relationship to your food. And um, it really has been like the lifelong journey, how to live your life in the most simple and connected way you can so that you can stay balanced. Be a kid again, play like you're a child get back to playing games. We have a climbing wall, we've got a climbing ceiling, <laughs> we've got, you know, we've got stationary bikes, we've got organic biodynamic gardens. We've got things to get you more involved in your own life. Not everybody's gonna do all these things, but if you implement some of these things into your life, you get more grounded, you get more connected. And that's, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's the little things that you can do. If you live in the city and you have a, a, an apartment, you could have a windowsill filled with herbs because any little thing that you do in connection with nature makes you more calm, more peaceful, makes you more you.